Good everyone. I hope you're having an amazing day. Uh, so in this episode, uh, I'm going to look at the some of the, the aspects to lead a Connect Center. Um, this is not a uh, practical session or a hands-on session. It's just a theoretical session. My apologies if you find that boring, but at the same time, um, it's kind of important uh, from a um, from this certification point of view uh, because you know. Uh, the reason why it's important, right? Uh, it's not the case that only a consultant will be taking the certification, right? You might be a manager who running a Connect Center um, who wanted to know about the Service Cloud, you know, certification. So, so keeping that into consideration, I think the Salesforce Cruise is more module inside it. Um, that being said, you know, uh, let's get started now. Uh, I've been talking about contact center right now. The first thing I wanted to address that you might be asking, what the heck is a contact center, right? So the the contact center, think about like a like a central point, like in a company, uh, you know, which manage all kind of a customer interaction across the various channel. So when I talk about the various channel, it could be email, the web chat, social media platform, right? Um, so you know, you you might have heard about the concept of a call center, right? So the contact centers typically includes one or maybe more than one call centers, right? So that's in a simple nutshell what a contact center is all about. Now, leading a contact center is altogether a different ball game, right? Working as an agent, right, is a different story, right? When you are an agent, right? So for instance, if you're an agent, right, so this is a you know, I like to draw ugly drawing. I should get Nobel Prize for one of the horrific drawing ever by any human client, right? Mm -hmm. So my apologies, you know, sometimes my jokes are silly. Um, so, you know, um, agent, right? So agent, the main role of agent uh, to answer, you know, the customer queries uh, via phone or it could be inbound or outbound, right? Which it is. Um, and agents often get told by the bosses what to do, uh, you know, certain metrics they have to uh, keep into consideration or certain targets they have to meet uh, for a quarter or for a year, whatever, right, so that the performance get measured. And when the performance get measured, that's how you can measure, uh, indirectly measure uh, the performance of a contact center. If, if your agents are meeting the target, if your customers are happy, obviously that's an indication that your contact center is doing well, right? If you're talking from a single call center perspective, right? Uh, because for the sake of argument, let's let's take a example of a one call center, right? I hope everyone understands what a call center is all about. I mean, I did some work in a call center back in the uni days, uh, just for a part-time job. It was it was all right. I mean. Not too bad. You get to learn customer experience skills, and you get to know how to work in the team, uh, and that kind of things you really get to know, which is priceless in my opinion. Um, okay, so now agent could be a call rep agent, or could be a some a customer service representative. Could be an you know you can refer agents by that name as well. Now. Like I said, if you're an agent, it's easy to, you know, do certain things because you have a boss and, you know, boss will give you an idea, you know, if you're stuck. Now, if you're a manager, you know, so obviously, you know, you've been given certain tasks. Let's say you're a manager here. So say you're a manager of this guy, right? Agent, right? Okay, so and now... Let me say manager. Okay, so now you're a manager of the team. Um, so you're manager of a team, and the man of say comprises a few agents. So your task is to uh, look after the agent performance and make sure that agents, you know, is doing what are supposed to do. So that's all add to a part of a manager leadership quality, right? Because at the end of the day, what is leadership? Leadership is to lead by an example. Right? It just not to so there's a difference between manage and and lead, okay? Because uh, most people think just because you have a job title that says manager, you will become a leader. It's not really the case. I have seen, 
you know, some of the managers, you know, without a in job title doing amazing work, right? They, you can say that they are the leader with no title, but they set a very, you know, you know, ex excellent example, right? For the people to follow at the same time, you know, I've seen people who have a job titles, but perform horrific as a manager, right? They are just nowhere compared to a leader. So keeping that into consideration, right? If you're a manager, you are leading few agents, which is great. So that is a part of a kind of a tiny leadership. But now let's move on to a bigger picture, okay? Now you're a manager of a part of this uh, connect center. Let's say for sake of argument, right? One call center, any of you agents. Now you have the boss, right? At the top of the manager, which is like a, say, head of the connect center. Okay, so I will say, um, you know, contact center head, right? Someone who makes the, all the decision. Now, when you move to that level from manager to contact center head, things changes altogether, right? Before you're used to saying to agent, hey, do this, do that. Now, when you move to a higher up the chain, right? You have to tell the leaders, managers how to do things. Now, it's a bit interesting and a bit different though, right? Because uh, managers have different uh, KPIs, right? Or the goal things and agents have different, right? Now, when you become a head of the center, you become uh, in charge of everyone's performance, everyone's well-being. In fact, you're responsible for entire call center, right? contact center now when you are a manager you're only responsible for your team right you have to make sure your team does well you know team performs well and you have to look look after the well-being of your agents right and you might have to you know interact nicely with different team but if you are a head of the contact center it's an entirely different ball game right so that's where you step into a role of leadership right and that leadership is very different to managing few teams right um, you have to uh at certain times as a leader have to say no right manager will come to you and say hey, i think this idea is great i think that idea is great right and you have to as a leader you have to step back and see what is good for your company work culture and for uh overall company goals right so you might have to say no hey i like that idea but unfortunately we have to pass this suggestion at this stage right um and you also have to build a culture of you know continuous improvement right now this is in my opinion is the most valuable aspect of a leader right the reason why I'm saying is right if you if you have a team right the team needs to be team has to be value right because the team is doing an amazing work I mean you might have seen, you know, very, you know, high performing firms uh, have a high turnover and you might wonder why, you know, you might be thinking, oh, that's an amazing company to work for. Why are so many people leaving? That's because, you know, of the, the failure by a leader to deliver on a culture of continuous improvement, right? For instance, if a person feels that he or she can't grow anymore, and obviously they will end up in you know moving somewhere else where they get valued and they have an opportunity for a career progression which is very important for most of the people right obviously you don't want it to work in a place where you get stuck i mean i mean if you're happy with it that's a different story but most of the people uh they realize hey it's not working out for me hey because you know i don't see any opportunities improve you know, I have to end up in working as an agent most of my life, even though I'm a star performer of my team, there's no option for promotion. That's where, you know, things go wrong. That's where the leadership comes into picture. If you as a leader fails to acknowledge that problem, then there is a big issue in your culture. Because, you know, most of the people think, oh, I got to see your title. I got to lead a title. I can do whatever you want. No, absolutely not. Because you are responsible for making sure your company perform well. And the performance of companies absolutely depends on the performance of your agents and your managers, right? And it's your prime responsibility to make sure your employees are happy. If your employees are not happy, your star performer will leave. And and what the person will say, hey, I don't want to work in that company because I, there is no career progression. Why the heck I should be wasting my time there? If the word goes out, right, 
and your competitor will say, hey, look at that guy, right? We got a leader there in that company who is not doing his job. So this is where the reputation of company usually comes down, right? I mean, if you're a big, you know, multi-trillion dollar company, you don't really worry because you have money to invest in marketing and to, you know, shut down the, you know, your opponents. But we're not talking about that. But, and then you have to measure, you know, other thing is the core values, what is important for your business, okay? Um, which is very important in my opinion. So measure core value means that there is something called, um, you know, CSAT scores, right? And CSAT scores, I'll write it down. You know, obviously every company has their own brand values, right? And you build a brand based on certain philosophy and certain policies, right? And as a company founder or as a company CEO, you often tend to stick to that philosophy or a concept or a brand value. And you also expect the people to follow that, which is great. Now, um, so that's why it's very important to measure what your core value is, right? And so that's why most of the companies send out a C CSAT score to the customer. If you get a very good score, that means you're doing well and your customers are happy and you are actually sticking to your core values. Now, you have a certain core values and it's bringing the CSAT score down and customers are happy. Then you have to revisit your core values and see whether it's really helping your customer or not. Because these things really make a lot of difference, right? And then the last thing, you know, you have to plan for you know the scenarios right now the planning involves right uh, you have to plan for all the scenarios so what if you know your call call center say grows say by 2023 instead of say you're getting um say 50 calls a day you start getting 400 calls a day how do you manage the scenario and what's the worst case scenario right what's the things which can go wrong you have to plan it you have to plan, say, for a year or for a five years plan. It's very important to think ahead, right? You can't assume that, oh, things are going fine today. It will go fine tomorrow. It's not really the case, right? I mean, things can go wrong for whatever reason. You know, recession can hit or, you know, your product might have more fault in it. The customer call can increase um, or, you know, customers started to leave. So a lot of things you have to plan, right? So that's why success with planning is very important. You have to, uh, you know, imitate or you, or I uh, would I say, um, you need to mimic your, you know, future plan with your leaders, right? With your managers, with your agents, to see what happens. Hey, from fifty calls, let's play a game. Let's uh, mimic a scenario where instead of fifty calls, we're getting hundred calls. Okay, or instead of making fifty calls a day to customer, you have to make hundred calls a day. How do you cope up with that scenario? And if you see that there's a crack happening. Uh, the people are giving up on pressure, that's the time to act. You need to work on that scenarios, right? And how to uh, cater for those kind of scenarios. It's very important, right, as a leader. So these are the things which I believe not only uh, limited to the Connect Center, but since we're specifically talking uh, from a uh, service cloud perspective, um, you can imitate this behavior in your other aspects as well. That's why leadership is, is a global thing, right? You can be a great president, you can be a prime minister, you can be a great uh, janitor, right? A head of the janitor board in your company. Uh, you can be great a doctor, you can be head of a medical association, right? So the leadership is, or you can be a great father, you can be a great partner, you can be a great uh, role model to your child, right? So the leadership comes, you know, in different forms, right? So it's it's a very important and a crucial uh, you know, um, skill set to have if you're leading a big company or even a, leading a few, small team, right? Uh, so that's pretty much I wanted to cover today. I hope I haven't bored you guys enough today, right? Because unfortunately, like I said, it's not a hands-on session. I can't demonstrate. I mean, I would love to demonstrate, you know, by bringing a few people to imitate, hey, you know, how do we do things? How do you do that? I mean, that would be good, good like like kind of a, a discussion kind of things, right? That would be pretty nice. But unfortunately, I can't do that for now. So for now, only thing, I'm the only one guy who wants speaking and you're the guys listening. So um, is that a good option? Not really for this scenario. But unfortunately, like I said, this is what it is at this stage. So my apologies if you, if you felt this lecture boring. 
uh, do let me know if you want me to cover in a different way. I'll try my best, right? I'm open for all suggestion. At the end of the day, like I said, you know, I'm extremely passionate about this technology. I want to bring this technology to everyone out there and encourage people to learn it because the way the sales force is growing is mind blowing. You know, there is no end to its success, right? So why don't why don't you be part of this one, right? The success story. So, so yeah. That's pretty much I wanted to cover, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you guys have an amazing Wednesday evening. Adios.